Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall. Um, it's been a while since you've heard that, I imagine, but I am back once again, hopefully uh, for good now. And so in today's video, we're going to be uh, looking at a computer we haven't touched in uh, quite some time, and that's the uh, famous Packard Bell Corner Desktop, which has been sitting in my closet for several months now. Um, as you know, uh, back in December of this past year, I uh, came into possession of two new Packard Bells, um, the Legend 130 CD Supreme and the Legend 1540 Supreme. And the 1540 Supreme kind of took the place of the corner desktop. I took a lot of the upgrades I'd put in here and put in the uh, 1540. But the uh, 1540, I've still got it set up on the other side of the room. I put the 130 CD Supreme back up just now, and I think what we're going to do is just to change things up, we're going to put the corner Packard Bell over here. It's not going to be as powerful as it was before because it's uh, MMX Overdrive chip and its uh, Voodoo One video card has been moved over to the 1540 which I think makes more sense in that computer. It's a, uh, it's a tower desktop. It has more breathing room, less likely for things to overheat in, in it than it would in here. And so we're just going to be a little bit more conservative with the uh, corner packer bill from now on, especially considering a few years ago I had the uh, power supply blow up on me. So thankfully I was able to replace that, not at a cheap price, but I would like to preserve this since it's pretty much one of a kind. <laughs> and so what we're going to do is we're going to put the, some memory in here. Um, I just threw some memory in here that's just been sitting loose in here for a while. And we're going to uh, also give it a compact flash upgrade. It has had compact flash and SD cards in here before, but for the last couple of years, I've been using a standard hard drive, so I think we'll just go ahead and go with something more solid state. And this computer originally had a 166 uh, megahertz socket 7 Pentium. I don't know where that CPU has gone off to, but in its place right now is the 133 Pentium that was originally in the 1540 Supreme. And uh, it's probably going to run at 166 just because of the jumper settings on here. But the one thing that concerns me is, is that the original processor that was in here, the 166, had a uh, fan on the heat sink, and this one does not. So the, uh, the fan is currently in a computer in my storage unit, which I will try to get out pretty soon so uh, yeah it'll might run a little bit more toasty than I would like for a little bit but that will be rectified soon and to help uh, keep it from overheating um, I'm going to move this sound modem card up a cup up a slot because it's practically right on top of it right now so yeah um, let's see I'm gonna take this bracket out you know uh, yeah hopefully I can get to the memory it's a very cramped computer inside these computers weren't really known for their upgradability but okay uh, I forgot this screwdriver is magnetized Let's go ahead and take all the cards out just for the time being. I'm going to keep the network card in here. It's a one of my favorites because of its compatibility with all sorts of versions of Windows. It's a uh, Netgear 10100 card. And this is not the original sound card. Well, it's still a Packard Bell sound card, but it's not the one that came in here. But it's close enough, still works. Gets the job done. 
So we'll let that hang over there. Okay, you know what? I think while we're in here, we will go ahead and swap out the CMOS battery because I seem to recall a while back it throwing some errors every now and then. So there we go. That ought to suffice. And so let's just figure out how I'm going to have these expansion cards uh, organized. One thing I do want to do is uh, I have some video RAM upgrade chips in here. That I'm going to take out and that is because when I up the refresh rate on this uh, computer it tends to uh, have some video artifacting so I think something's not quite right right with those expansion chips so that brings us down from two megs to one meg but not the end of the world of course I forgot this has a coast module in here. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I think we will... Uh... Actually, let's go ahead and take this blanking plate out. Wait, one, two, three, so that's four slots, so I don't think we need uh, to take all of them out. I think we can uh, maybe put the compact flash card right here. I'm not looking forward, by the way, to installing the memory because it is very cramped over there. I don't remember why I... Uh, the RAM out of here to begin with. And next we will... Okay, that wasn't very bright of me. Yeah, the sound card is not going to fit there, so we are going to have to take this bracket out. this uh, down Ugh, I'm always dropping screws on the floor all right so this can go right here don't want too much uh, around that heat sink. Oh, it'll just line up. That would be great. There we go. Hopefully it's still in place. Come on. Probably should have moved this keyboard out of the way, but I didn't have the foresight. Okay, now we'll uh, unplug the hard drive. Tangled from there, of course. I uh, should have plugged it in beforehand, but this is not the evening for foresight, apparently. <laughs> and I do this without slicing my hand open. And I can, thank goodness. Plug up power. There we go. Now why 
Why did I not do this first? That is the question that will boggle philosophers for decades to come, perhaps even centuries. a little bit tighter. I guess not. You know, I just realized uh, June of this year will be five years since I got this computer. I believe I've had it this long. Okay, and then we'll put the uh, sound card right there. Yeah, that gives the CPU a little bit of breathing room. You know, I will be adding a uh, fan to it. Just not tonight. And the network card can go up here at the top. Blinking plate in. Okay, that did the trick. does it for uh, our expansion cards. Ah, now the part I've been dreading, the memory. I normally don't mind putting memory in a computer, but I've got big hands. And that's how much clearance I have. <laughs> if, it's, if you can see that, I'm not sure if you can or not. But I guess we can start by turning it around. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Okay, that's three and that's four. I forget how much memory this is. Hopefully it's a decent amount. Hopefully the very least 16. Though I prefer 32. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have s small hands to get this RAM in here. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh man. Oh, that went in. I continue on this path to success. As much as I love vintage computers, I think life was made a lot easier when uh, 
we went away from uh, SIM and EDO RAM to what we have now because this could be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get installed. Okay, that went in. Now the reason I'm getting this computer set back up is at some point in the near future I would like to redo my intro, make an updated intro video for my videos. And the corner Packard Bell has always kind of been the uh, one of the main parts of the intro where the camera zooms in on it to the to the logo and I mean I could do it with other Packard Bells or any computer really but I don't know the it's just more traditional with a corner Packard Bell it's as simple as that just got one more to do and this is the part that's closest to the uh, IDE cable, which uh, doesn't give me a whole lot of clearance. Not that I had much clearance to begin with in here. up a storm by the way this might be this might take both my hands I know this isn't coming out on camera you're just having to rely on my narration Bell, I love you, but your motherboard layouts leave a lot to be desired. Okay, before I put it fully together, by the way, I got the finally got the memory in. I had to unplug one of the IE cables to get to that last slot, which oh, that was fun. <laughs> but anyway, um, I do have it connected to my TV, and we're going to see if um, we get a signal from it. And if we do, if we've got a good amount of memory, and see if card is being read, and all that good stuff. So, here we go. First power on in quite a few months. Well, it's awful quiet. Hmm. No signal. I feel, feel air coming out of the uh, power supply. Huh. Let me do some uh, troubleshooting here. Okay, I unplugged the IDE cable and this is what we get now. Yeah, it is very unhappy with me. So that was, I think, four long beeps. Um, could check it online, but I'm just going to guess that it's memory related, so I'm going to check through and see what's going on. Well, that was a lot of work. <laughs> you know, it's 
it never ceases to amaze me. When it comes to vintage computers, there's always... It's a domino effect of, of uh, problems. Apparently, um, the memory was not configured properly. And by the way, it was three beeps, not four beeps. Um, I, before someone corrects me in the comments. And so I had to reconfigure the RAM. And finally, I got it to post, but then it was only showing eight megs of RAM. Found some more memory. I did all kinds of different memory configurations. Problem with problem with most of my EDO memory is that it it's unlabeled. There's no telling what kind of what uh, capacity it is. So it was a guessing game. Finally got a fair amount of memory, 40 megs, and then. I plugged the uh, CD-ROM IDE cable back up, wouldn't post. I tried uh, several different ways of getting it plugged in. The IDE cable wasn't keyed. I just could not get it to work. So I put another IDE cable in there and everything seems to be working fine. So I think we can go ahead and close this thing up and uh, get it fully functional. And the piece de resistance. Why that is removable, I will never know. All right, I think we got everything uh, put into place, so let's power it on. Boy, this. I'm just absolutely amazed at how quiet this computer is because we don't have a CPU fan. We don't have a hard drive in here. And the only real noise that's coming from this is the power supply. Of course, we need to set our date and time. And it is most certainly not January 1st, 1990. It is March uh, 25th, 2022. And it is 10.02 p.m., so in 24-hour time, that would be 22.02. CF card and CD-ROM are being detected. Oh, by the way, um, for those who know the history of this particular computer, um, I have never had the uh, proper drive rails for this CD-ROM drive, and I still don't. However... A viewer of mine messaged me on Facebook a few weeks ago. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but he um, sent me the uh, files to have the uh, drive rails for the CD-ROM drive 3D printed for this computer. Now, I currently don't have a 3D printer. I don't plan on getting one, but perhaps um, a local library in my area might be able to uh, take care of that for me, so... I will keep you guys up to date on that. Now it's seeing it as a 133 megahertz Pentium, which I guess makes sense because that's what I had and because I took it out of the uh, 1540, which was 133. So it's um, it's been downgraded quite a bit. It originally had a 166, so I'm going to have to find one of those at some point. But eh, 133, no big deal. I can live with that. Let's find our uh, Restore CD. And uh, let's see. Okay, that is obviously not the right boot disk. I don't have these labeled. <laughs> One moment. Okay, pretty sure we got the right boot disk now. Just gotta wait for it to boot on into uh, the restore process. Boy, I have worked up a sweat tonight working on this silly thing. My uh, CD-ROM driver modifications seem to have worked just fine.
even though we don't have enough memory to uh, use the mouse for some reason. Not that it's really necessary. Now, first thing I want to do is, I think I have a FAT32 partition on this uh, CF card, and of course this version of Windows 95 is FAT16 only. This is an 8 gigabyte uh, CD-ROM, not CD-ROM, an 8 gigabyte CF card. So we'll only be using 2 gigabytes of it at the moment, but I will be upgrading this to uh, 95 OSR2. Which then we can convert it to FAT32 and expand it to use the full 8 gigs. And of course, since we uh, have a fresh partition table, it's having trouble reading drive C, so we're going to get all kinds of crazy error messages until we uh, format it, which we'll do right now. Yes, I would like to format. And this being a very fast CF card, it takes no time at all to uh, do that. Interesting how they have hard drive as one word there. I don't know if we caught that or not in time. <laughs> Alright, I do not have a format number for this computer, so we'll just let it do a generic format and we will just let this rot away for a little bit. Okay, restoration was successfully completed. And so we uh, should be able to reboot now once it uh, does its thing here. We'll do a Control-Alt-Delete. I've never had a monitor this small, by the way, on this uh, corner packer bill. I usually have the bigger one on here, but I kind of like it better with the smaller one. It just, I don't know, it feels more cozy and more uh, manageable. All right, starting Windows 95. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Packer Bell computer. We are sure that it will meet your computing needs. Well, I sure hope so. Because I'm sure in 1996 when this computer was built, it would have cost an arm and a leg. So, yeah, it better uh, meet my computing needs. I know a lot of people, when they got their first computers back in the mid-90s, when this was new, uh, a lot of people had to finance them. There's a little black scuff on this monitor. I need to probably take a magic eraser and uh, take care of that. This computer is mostly silent now. I know I keep saying this, but it's amazing, <laughs> really. Okay, the computer's so quiet now that drive seek actually scared me a little bit. <laughs> Customer information. Yes, I accept. At least I think I do. All right. System has been transferred. Oh, that's pleasant.
one of the most exciting uh, splash screens ever made in the history of computers. Hasn't loaded the video driver yet, as you can see. <laughs> It's a very groovy looking navigator. There should have been sound there, but these speaker wires on this monitor are not the best. So if we don't get any sound, I'm really not that surprised by that. Boots up fairly fast. Yeah, sound is supposedly working, uh, sound card wise, but yeah, I think there's some, uh, I think there's a bad connection somewhere. There we go. Yeah, I gotta have the power cord for the speakers in just the right spot. And that did it. So let's try Navigator again. Welcome from Packard Bell. There we go. We offer you two computing environments to choose from. Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right. Um. Next thing we need to do is upgrade to a newer version of Windows 95 so we can uh, take full advantage of our 8 gig CF card. But we will uh, do that in the morning. Well, I'll do that in the morning. Through the magic of video editing, you will see that be completed right now. Uh, my hand's too stiff from working with that memory. <laughs> Well, it's the very next day, and I've done quite a bit. And I recorded quite a bit as well, but unfortunately, I did not have my microphone turned on. And so, all of that footage is pretty much useless. But, what I've done, what I've done is I've um, upgraded to Windows 95 d Lite, which is a special version of Windows 95 made by... Uh, a uh, YouTube user, I believe he's a YouTube user, called Razorback, which I've shown this version of Windows quite a bit on this channel, but it's Windows 95B with um, added features. So that's what we have running on here now. And I have also upgraded uh, to FAT32 using a Cronus OS selector, so I'm now using the full 8 gigs of the CF card. Had some tr trouble with my uh, network card though. Um, the Netgear card I had in here, I would, I got the drivers installed and everything, but then it just, I had the cable connected to it, there, it lit up, but I could not get an IP address. It would not connect to the network at all, and I do not know why. So I took the computer back apart, which was a pain in the neck, and I put the um, another Netgear network card in there that was very similar, and voila, it works now. And I now have my uh, 
Open Media Vault server connected to it, which has a bunch of my games and uh, software installers for vintage computers like this. And so, yeah, I wish I could have shown you guys some more, but I'm still learning this uh, new uh, lapel microphone, and apparently the part that connects to the camera decided to turn itself off at some point, or I just forgot to turn it on. So, that was irritating, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless. Hopefully, I'll have even more to come. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.